Now uh, we go to the next step in your scientific method, which is your hypothesis. When you say hypothesis, of course, this is an educated guess, or this is a possible answer to your scientific question. Now, also remember that your hypothesis should show the relationship between your variables. It should also be testable. Your hypothesis and your scientific question are related, okay? Your hypothesis is the possible answer to your scientific question. When you make your scientific question or your scientific problem, it should be in question form, okay? Since we say it is a scientific question, it should be in question form. Or that means we should end it with a question mark. In your hypothesis, on the other hand, whenever you're writing your hypothesis, this should be in your statement form, okay? So this should be written in statement form. That means it should not end with a question mark. It should end with a period, okay? So again, your hypothesis is a possible answer to your scientific question. It should also show the relationship between your variables. It's the same as your scientific question. The only difference is that it is in statement form and it serves to answer your scientific question. Okay, so uh, now remember that there are two ways through which you can write your hypothesis. The first way is that you can use the will format. So you say, if I use gain, then it will remove more stains. Okay, so the will format, or you can also use the if and then format. Okay, um, so you can also say, if I use palm olive, then it is going to remove more stains, okay? Or you can say palm olive will remove more stains, all right? So again, these are the two formats that you can use whenever you write your hypothesis, your educated guess, the possible answer to your scientific question, the will format and the if-then format. Any questions so far? Any questions? Okay, if you have no questions, then I'll move on. Now, in your examples a while ago, in the examples of our scientific question, these are the possible hypotheses that we can have. So you can say the amount of yeast will affect the size of the bread. Or you can also say if I increase the amount of yeast, then the size of the bread will also be increased. Okay, so that is going to be in your if-then format. You can also say if I use gain, then these stains will be removed better. Okay, so this is in your if-then format. Or you can say gain will remove dish stains better. Okay, that's in your real format. Now, the third example that you have here, an increased amount of sunlight will make the tomato plants taller. This is in your real format. Or you can say if I increase the amount of sunlight or if the amount of sunlight is increased, then the tomato plants will grow taller. That's in your if-then format. Now, again, this class is being recorded for the benefit of those people who might be joining us um, in the later, the, the, late, the later days. So then if you need your, the discussion video, I can send this to you. You can just put your email address in the chat box, then I can send or I can share the discussion video with you so that you don't need to copy this in your notes. Again, please write or just type in your email address so I can share the discussion video with you. All right, so we're done with hypothesis. All right, now when you say experimentation here, the main purpose of experimentation is of course to check whether your hypothesis is valid or not. To check whether your hypothesis is correct or not, we do experimentation. Okay, so when again we say experiment, this is done to test the validity of your hypothesis. And this may be done several times to be fair and of course so that your results are going to be free from bias. Okay, so experimentation, again, its purpose is to test the validity of your hypothesis, to check whether your hypothesis is correct or not. Now, uh, we also have these terms here. Sometimes this also asks in your EOC test. You are given several examples and you are asked whether this example is a material or this example is a procedure in your experiment. Now, what's the difference between materials and procedures? When you say materials, of course, these are or this is the list of things that are needed in your experiments, say your glasswares, your chemicals, okay? So these are the things that you need so that you can conduct your experiment, that's your materials. When you say procedures, on the other hand, these are the steps that you follow in, in your experiment, okay? So the steps that you follow in your experiment, these are the procedures, okay? So that's the difference between, between your materials and your procedures.